Well, hello and welcome back to the Journey Home program. I'm your host, John Mark Grodi, here on EWTN, and we're uh, great to be. It's great to be back with you for another story, a story of conversion, how the Lord is working in our lives, how He brings us, brings us home uh, to Him and His Church. And we're joined tonight by Alicia Baker, a revert to the Catholic faith. She makes Catholic items for Etsy and is on Instagram at noheartuntouched at gmail.com. Check it out there. Alicia, so <laughs> thanks for joining us this evening. Yes, thank you for having me. Been looking forward to, to speaking for a while. We, we follow some of your stuff on the, on the internet. It's, it's <laughs> very edifying and you know, a, lot, a lot of neat stuff that you're making there. So Thank you. Uh, but I'm excited to hear your story. You yes. Know. So uh, take us back. Where does it all begin for you? Um... Well, I think it really begins when, um, how I grew up, um, I really wasn't catechized um, because my own parents weren't catechized. As Catholics. Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, we were very um, culturally Catholic. Mm. Being of Hispanic descent, I felt like it was always everywhere, you know, Our Lady of Guadalupe rosaries yeah. and um, <clears throat> making sure everybody had their sacraments, but it wasn't an actual um, living the faith. And then, you know, like I said, and then also passing it down, you know, the beautiful teachings of the church and, yeah. and everything. Um, it just wasn't fully there. And I, you know, my parents weren't catechized themselves. So it was kind of hard, right. you know, to pass it on to your own children. Sure. Um, where, did, where did you grow up? I grew up in Finley, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right there. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think it just, a lot of it stemmed from that. Um, just yeah. kind of growing up with a lot, a lot, not a lot of those core beliefs, mm -hmm. those, like I said, those teachings, um, those morals, you know, right from the get go. And um, so I formed, you know, a lot of my own opinions mm -hmm. and a lot of my own beliefs, you know, about, I, I believed in God sure. and um, I went to CCD and, um, you know, like I said, made my sacraments and, and mm -hmm. but it was more of um, like checking things off the list, sure, you sure. know, like, oh, we gotta get, you know, our girls to, um, at the time it was just me and my sister, um, we got to get the girls, you know, their sacraments done and make sure. But I mean, we never went to mass on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it was just very cultural and kind of, you know, picking here and there of what we, yeah. what we wanted to, what we wanted to, to do. Sure, sure. Um, so I think a lot of that stems from that. Now, my dad did have a reversion um, when I was, I think about in middle school. So that did change quite a lot. Um, but like I said, at that point I had already formed, you know, sure. a lot of my own opinions and I think it was route 13 or 14 when that happened. Um, and so that was big, big for him. Mm -hmm. And so it affected all of us, obviously. Yeah. But, um, like I said, unfortunately I had already had a lot of my own opinions and beliefs and, yeah. and whatnot. Um, and then, so then fast forward several years. Um, so while I did take it, a, my faith a little bit more seriously, I really didn't understand, mm -hmm. you know, why these were the teachings of the church, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, understand that Jesus is fully present in the Eucharist and that, you know, he specifically was, you know, died on the cross, not just for all of us, but specifically for me and for you right, and, right. you know, each individual person. I never really um, grasped that at yeah. all. And so um, I kind of just um, grew up and uh, became a young adult. And <clears throat> would um, just kind of surround myself with not necessarily the best people. Um, like I said, in that mindset, I mean, I was friends with other Catholics. But like I said, again, it was more of by name and by, like I said, checking things off the list. Right. Um, it wasn't, you know, like I said, truly understanding and, and yeah. believing everything that, you know, the church teaches. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't have... <laughs> Like I said, the best influences. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ended up moving out. I think um, I was like in my early 20s, uh, moved out. And I feel like that was probably a recipe for disaster at that <laughs> point um, because I was living um, at that point when I moved out, um, I was living the typical, um, you know, college. I was taking a few college courses, uh, but I was mostly working full time. And um, so I, like I said, total, you know, college, typical college experience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going out all the time or, you know, having parties, you know, at my new apartment with my new roommate and um, just like I said, just not really the best environment and definitely not fostering, you know, the faith because yeah. that just, like I said, wasn't a priority. 
We're joined tonight by Alicia Baker, a revert to the Catholic faith. You know, I'm thinking as you're as you're relaying your story here, Alicia, how <clears throat> you know when we we were surrounded by cultural Catholicism, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good uh, seeds planted there. Mm -hmm. Certainly, right. you know the right, and the, it's, it's a generally positive. But one thing that that can be missed, right, is mm -hmm. this the sense of of the personal relevance, right? Like 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 what difference does this make in my life, right? You know, and if we if we have a, a basically good childhood and we're basically have basically mm -hmm. positive it, it really doesn't sometimes come to later that well what's the crisis why does this why yeah. do i even what, does that does that kind of ring with your experience yeah i feel sense? like it was definitely like you said it was um it wasn't yeah like personal yeah. i like i said it, it didn't uh click with me personally yeah. yet like i said like you said it was just general and those seeds were planted mm -hmm. but it wasn't a full understanding where, where did what did you think about sin at this point, because again, as what, what we would say with the gospel is right, the gospel comes as a remedy to the problem of sin. But, but the question is whether the whether a person actually thinks that that's a problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, sin. I mean, I really didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. didn't understand what that meant. I, I you know I we, like I said as far as catechesis, there was you know yeah, my parents yeah. were playing catch up big sure, time. Sure, sure. So. Um, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand, yeah. you know, uh, sin and the repercussions of sin mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the confessional. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't understand any of that. That was not, um, yeah. that was not definitely like sure. not on my mind, right. you know, like for every act kind of, you know, like we're taught in general for every action, there's a consequence. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely not, the, those two were not connecting right. at that time. Right. Um, so like I said, just living, you know, in that kind of environment was, didn't really help. It didn't yeah. help foster my faith or, you know, really, um, help me go deeper and understanding, you know, those things. So just from, unfortunately from being in that kind of environment, I felt like it just kind of, you know, I exposed myself to a lot of things that, um, were, you know, were not good. I, I put myself in situations that like I should not have been in. And, you know, not just for my soul, but just, you know, physically, yeah. you know, as, as a young woman, um, you know, just going to parties and, you know, not, you know, being around people I had, you know, I'd never been with before. And just, you know, like I said, you know, drinking and mm -hmm. not making good decisions. And like I said, just common sense wise, that was not a good choice, you know, being, like I said, an environment where I don't know people and just not being safe, you know, in general. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so unfortunately, because of those situations and, and, and me thinking that this was normal, you know, this was, and that I wasn't, you know, sinning in right, any way, right. um, I unfortunately put myself in a, in a terrible situation. And um, we were out of town. We decided to go to a party out of town. And um, I was with my roommate and a couple of other friends. And um, I, like I said, it just it was not good common sense. I should have never been in the situation in the first place. So unfortunately, I ended up, I ended up being sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't realize what had happened until the next morning. And unfortunately, it was just a very, very weird situation um everybody had left me um I, I so like i said we drove out of town to this party and everybody had left me a vehicle everything so i was wow. literally just <laughs> yeah. by myself i mean it was a bizarre crazy you know situation and um so you know i just tried to you know get myself out of that situation and, and get back home and i felt like after it happened um honestly i feel like maybe something was put in my drink because it wasn't mm. until later that I realized certain parts, you know, and, yeah. and remembered certain things. Um, but as far as coping with it in that situation and then in that moment with those people that I went with and, you know, living with my roommate and stuff, I, I really made light of it. Um, I, in front of them, mm. um, in front of them, I made light of the situation. Um, and because I remembered some of those things, it was kind of looked at as like, oh, you were just really drunk. You know, like you you made that choice um, and it's, you know, what you wanted to do. And really, 
it, it wasn't. And, but like I said, to cope with it, I kind of just, you know, like I said, I felt like at that point, nobody really believed me anyways. Mm. So, you know, I might as well just go along with yeah. what everybody else thought. Mm. Um, but deep down inside, I mean, I was, it was horrible. I mean, it was absolutely horrible. Um, when I was 15 and I had a, I had a quinceanera. Mm. And so, like I said, a culturally again, yeah. you know, I had a quinceanera mass and everything. And, and I had a chastity ring. And at that point, like I said, I really didn't understand what that totally meant, um, but it was something important to me, and I and I knew that I was going to keep that promise. Well, then when that happened, I was just destroyed, mm -hmm. you know. I, and like I said, in front of other people, I tried to pass it off as, okay, yeah, I remember these things, you know. Okay, maybe I did, you know, make that choice. Maybe I did do that, but you know, when I thought about it deep down inside, it I did not consent to any mm -hmm. of that, yeah. and so from that moment, I mean, it was a pretty destructive path mm. um, that, I, that I set myself on. Um, and, you know, like I said, I just, it was inside, I was, it was really hard for me to wrap my mind around it and to understand because I felt like, you know, because I had made, even though I didn't fully didn't understand the chastity ring and, and what that mm. meant, I felt like I was betrayed by God. Mm. I felt like, you know, where, where were you? You know, why didn't you protect me? Why didn't you help me? Why didn't, uh, why did I, you know, why was I in that situation in the first place? Um, a lot of it was on him and not on me. <laughs> not, um, you know, what, how, I, you know, the decisions I made right. kind of, you know, led me to that point. Um, so, yeah, it was just really hard. I mean, I think that was the only time in my, my whole life that I felt like I just wanted to die. Mm. Like, I just did not want to go on. I didn't want to talk to my parents. I didn't want to talk to my sister, you know, like at the time. I did have little brothers at the time, um, but I didn't want to, you know, be around my family. Um, and my mom picked up on that, you know, she was like, you know, what's going on with you? I don't, you know, you don't call me, you don't text me, you know, what's going on? And I always made some kind of excuse, you know, that, um, to just, you know, like I said, distance myself from them. Because I felt like she would know. Mm -hmm. You know, your mom knows you best. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she knows what's going on. Moms always know what's going on yeah. or that there's something wrong. So um, that was really hard for me for a while because, like I said, I just ha really had to distance myself. I did not want to be with any of my family members or anything like that. So um, I just remember... I think it was the weekend of, or the following weekend, going to mass, um, and just having flashbacks almost. And then I felt worse because I was just like, "Why am I remembering these things? Why is it happening during mass out of all places?" Um, and it was just really hard for me. And then, like, it was just a really bizarre situation. Like I said, my friends had felt betrayed, and I, honestly, now I don't remember why. Um, but it was just like I felt like I'd been betrayed on all all sides. Like I said, you know, my friends weren't really talking to me. I felt betrayed by God. Um, I felt alone. You know, I felt like I really didn't have anybody to go to to be there for me. Um, and when I did finally tell my mom, um, I mean, of course, she was really understanding and, and helped me out and, and whatnot. But I was just like, don't tell my dad. I feel like this is, you know, this is going to be really upsetting for him to, to hear. Um, but thanks be to God, she, you know, like I said, got me through it. Um, and I felt like I did receive some healing, mm. um, but it wasn't a full healing because at that point I was starting to fill my life with other things because mm -hmm. like I said, I, I did feel so betrayed by God. I just felt kind of damaged and I felt um, unworthy. I felt unclean. I felt, um, just kind of like um, pretty much like garbage. I just felt totally worthless is what I felt like. And, um, like I said, at that time, I really didn't understand that, you know, Jesus was there for me this whole time mm -hmm. through everything. Um, so from that point, because of that incident, mm -hmm. I went through my life just totally indulging myself mm. into the party lifestyle, mm. into, you know, unchaste relationships, 
um, and to substance abuse. Um, like I said, it was just a very destructive, um, not good path. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the whole time I was really searching for Jesus. Absolutely. I was really searching for his love. I was filling myself with these other forms of love, mm-hmm. you know, that I thought was was true love and was real love. And, you know, all my friends were living this lifestyle. So yeah. what's really wrong with it? Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I was telling myself or that's the lies that Satan was telling me that I was trying to convince myself of. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was just a really long path of, like I said, that destructive lifestyle, um, not realizing, um, you know, that Jesus was waiting for me, mm-hmm. um, not going to confession. Cause like I said, I really didn't understand and really didn't think, well, there's, you know, lots of people who live like this and right. they're Catholics who live like this, right. you know, like it's not really, you know, wrong. Um, and then, like I said, just not having the, those types of solid faith filled friendships, um, to kind of help me and be like, you know, what's going on with you? You know, yeah. what's what's really happening here? There's a word that you mentioned earlier. I, I wanted to just ask about it a little bit because <clears throat> it it seems to to bear on, you know, again, what happens and then the, the ways that we cope with it and deal with it going afterwards. And it, it's interesting, you know, your friends, you mentioned that there was this concern at the beginning in the aftermath talking about consent, right? Yeah. And it's interesting, like the world now divides the world between yeah. consent and non-consent yeah. as if that's the only metric for whether something is good or not. Yeah. And that leaves us in this place where, where well, as long as I'm consenting to things, alcohol, whatever it yeah. is, it can't be that bad. Right. But that's not what we're made. Like we know, we know that that doesn't fit with the right. kind of being that I am. Right. It, that can't be all that it's about. Right. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like, um, like I said, just from being in that environment, it was just not, like you said, oh, because you think it's okay, and mm-hmm. okay, well, yeah, you did choose that, and everything is fine, and everything is okay, and it's like, it's really not, like mm-hmm. I said, nobody was really um, in the full realization of of how, you know, what <laughs> what life could really be like. Right, what you're made for. What right. You're, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so like I said, unfortunately, I lived that that way for several years, um, and just, just like I said, just kind of felt really empty, mm-hmm. and nothing was really fulfilling. Um, you know, my relationship with my parents was kind of rocky. I remember a couple of times, you know, my mom, you know, talking to me about on the phone about you know a particular guy, and you know she was really concerned, and you know thought you know this is not going to be good, and. You know, like I said, I feel like she knew what was going on with me. But like I said, I just was trying to keep everything hush hush and secretive and and um, just like I said, on that path of um, sorrow really mm-hmm. is what it was um, and just not really seeking the help that I that I that I should have. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that went on for several years, like I said, and. um, um I can't remember. I think there were there came to a point in time where, um, like I said, there had been kind of relationships or you know whatnot that I had been through, and I was really like I said looking for love. Um, I didn't understand the kind of love that I was looking for though, mm-hmm. um, and so I was questioning, you know, why is this always falling apart? Why is there so much drama? Why is there um, why do I feel like anxiety, you know, worrying about, you know, certain things or, um, and like I said, again, I was just searching for that love of Jesus that I didn't, that I didn't, you know, put those two things together. Right. Um, and so it took a while for me, like I said, to come to that point. Um, and once I did, um, it was like one of the last times, um, it was actually before I got on Catholic match. <laughs> Um, and had my reversion, but um, I was talking to this man and I, you know, was really hoping, okay, maybe this, maybe this could be it. Maybe this could be a good relationship. And there was all kind of miscommunications and everything completely fell apart. And I remember thinking, I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of like this happening to me. You know, why is it always happening to me? Um, 
you know, why can't I ever find um, that love, that love that I'm that I'm looking for? And um, I literally I w had went out that night and um, got home and was just like, you know, intoxicated and went to sleep. And then I woke up really early the next morning and I just something clicked like something was just like I'm so tired I'm just really tired of this like this is just old and I feel like I'm not getting anywhere and I you know nothing good is coming from any of these situations and it's not fruitful and I don't know what else to do other than to just turn to God um so it was a little bit before I, you know, went to confession, but I started reading more and asking my dad all kinds of questions because I thought, mm. like I said, because he had a reversion, he was like a catechism. <laughs> <laughs> like I just all I had to do was ask him a question and, yeah. you know, he yeah. knew or he was like, How, you know, here's this book or here's, mm. you know, what I read about this or and, and whatnot. So um, eventually I did go to confession um, and like I said, at this point, I, th I feel like I had had some healing, um, and thanks be to God. Um, but it wasn't until years later that I feel like I received the rest of my healing. Right. Um, but yeah, so then my, you know, like I said, my dad was an open book and he really helped me get onto that path of coming back home and realizing that love and mercy that was waiting for mm -hmm. me. And I feel like once I finally realized all the lies that I had been thinking of, like that I was worthless, that I was unclean, that um, it was too late, you know, that I that I couldn't come back, um, that I was damaged, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those lies of the enemy that I had believed for yeah. so long. Once I realized, like I said, that God loved me as an individual, mm -hmm. that on the cross he saw me, that was when I, uh, like everything was just like, it was just a full realization mm -hmm. of like, oh my goodness, what have, what have I been doing? Yeah. <laughs> what have I even, well, what kind of life have I been living? Um, but I think that's the one thing I always think about, um, you know, and I have people reach out to me on my social media or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always encouraging people to go to confession. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am always saying, you know, nobody is ever too far away. Like that's right. one of the biggest, I think, lies that the enemy tries to tell you yeah. is that we're never, we're never too far away. Yeah. And, and you mentioned about um, sin being boring, right? And I, and I think another, another sort of like subtle lie in all this, right, <clears throat> is that I think sometimes when the gospel is presented to us, um, we tend to think of the people who need help from Jesus those people out there, like the really mean people, like the really bad people, right? <laughs> uh, and we can kind of like, we can interpret sin to be in this very narrow sense of like the really evil maliciousness that some people out there do. Yeah. But we can also interpret it much more broadly in the sense of like all the wounds, all the yes. lies that I have, right? Yes. Even, uh, you do, again, they talked about the monotony, even just the patterns that I'm enslaved to that I can't get yes. out of, right? Yes. Yeah, it was um, very much like that that song where um, I think it talks about Jesus being like a chain breaker, yeah. breaking those chains. Yeah. Um, and another song I always think of is that that reckless love. Oh, by I love that, song. <laughs> <laughs> um, that really, I mean, like years later, you yeah. know, obviously hearing that song, I was like, oh my goodness, like that's that's what I felt like. I mm -hmm. felt like once I realized how much he loved me as an individual person and all this truth. Yeah. that was waiting for me here. You know, I was believing all these lies for so many years and yeah. there was all this truth that I, I didn't even know. Right. And, um, so yeah, once I, once that came into realization, I mean, it was just a whole different world. I mean, like I said, it did take some time and, and, and learning and recatechizing yeah. and, um, I mean, even, even now, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I'm, you know, a wife and a mother now and, yeah. I feel like I'm constantly learning new things yeah. um, and teaching my own children. But um, it, yeah, it was just, it was a crazy realization. And I, but I, like I said, that's one thing I always want to try to reiterate to people is that, you know, you're never too far away. 
Yeah. Um, you know, the enemy is always going to try to convince you mm -hmm. that it, you're too far gone. You've made too many mistakes. Um, you are damaged goods, mm -hmm. you know, and it'd just be better off if you just kept living the way that you live because right. you can't change it. So you might as well just stay that way. Let, let's take a little break uh, okay. and then we'll come back and, and, and talk more about, you know, the you know, the continuing journey and, and yeah. how it all played out there. Um, okay. Um, really appreciate your story so far. And again, we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're joined tonight by Alicia Baker. She's a revert of the Catholic faith. And you can find her, her, her Catholic goods on an Etsy. And she's also on Instagram at noheartuntouched at gmail.com. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to the Journey Home program. We're in the second half of the hour today. Uh, tonight we're speaking with Alicia Baker. She's a revert to the Catholic faith and she has goods on Etsy and on Instagram. You can check her out there. Uh, but great story so far, Alicia. Thanks for sharing us. You know, some, some tough stuff and there's some tough um, experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but when we left off, you know, we're talking a little bit about this, I think an important topic, you know, for, for people to think about today, which is just, I think one of the subtle lies the devil tells us mm -hmm. is that uh, me and my feelings and my problems and my loneliness or whatever is all the, the brokenness mm -hmm. that the gospel isn't for me. It's for like those other sinners or the people who have <laughs> real problems, you know, and it takes us a while to right. really say, oh, no, this is Christ came to love me. Right? right. Well, and I think also there's the opposite of that, too, where it's yeah. like you think, oh, those people have made good choices their whole life. You know, I, I can't do that. It's too late for me. Right. And I feel like that was definitely the mentality that I thought of. Um, I think I went through both, but I feel like what really was holding me back um, was that was that latter part of thinking it's it's mm -hmm. just too late for me. They play into each other, those two. Yes. Swinging between those. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, going to the point of like, well, you know, those people would never accept me and I could never, you know, live that kind of life. And that's, you know, they're, they're all holier than thou mm -hmm. to being like, well, I can't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I, 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 you know, I didn't grow up like that. I didn't live like that. I don't know what that life is about. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that was, a, that was definitely the last part that held mm -hmm. me back for a while was just thinking that I, it was, it was too late yeah. and that everybody else was better than I was. And that, um, you know, like I said, only learning about er, and knowing certain things of like, you know, looking you know, at the church and seeing all these saints and being like, oh, you know, they lived awesome, holy, perfect lives, you know, not really yeah. understanding, you know, there are those stories of the saints, yeah. um, you know, like, like I said, St. Augustine. Yeah. Talk to us about him. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> I think really learning about St. Augustine literally gave me so much hope yeah. and, you know, knowing that <sighs> I, I, like his story always is just so mind blowing to me and you know, that he's, you know, where he is in the church and the doctor of the church. And I mean, it's just like, it's crazy to me. Um, and then of course his mother, mm -hmm. I mean, that just, it just is so mind blowing to me that, you know, somebody who made all those different mistakes and lived that mm -hmm. kind of crazy life, a that, restless heart. Yes. Yeah. That really, I think, resonated with resonated with me because like I said the, this whole time I really do feel like you know I was searching for that love and I was restless I had a restless heart yeah. that was in pursuit of that but I didn't understand it in that way right um so and I love I mean I always make sure to tell my kids that too you know the stories of the saints the different mm -hmm. lives that they had because and I always like I said re reiterate to them no one is too far away look at this saint you know look what they went through and, and look at this saint you know they lived a totally different life and um I really try to like I said hit that home with them so they That's understand cool. too like you know if they ever go through anything challenging in their life that they'll always realize that nothing is you know they're never too far away from it, him. it gets at the communal nature of the faith you know faith comes by hearing you know, we, we, we receive the gospel through other people's as witness their lives, the saints, as well as other people. You know, you, you'd you mentioned before the break that as you start this this searching process, now asking, mm -hmm. now kind of really, you know, admitting that you want to, to 
to move toward God. Mm -hmm. You began to talk, you know, pick your dad's brain yeah. a little bit. Tell us a little bit, you know, what, what prompted his reversion to the faith? What was that about? <sighs> Honestly, I feel yeah. like my dad kind of had a restless heart too. Uh, um, uh, he grew up in kind of a chaotic home. Um, again, it was faith was a cultural thing. Sure. Um, you know, checking things off the list, sacraments or, you know, um, sacramentals, you know, having those kinds of things in the home, but it wasn't really anything of substance. Um, and so that was, again, like I said, how my childhood started. Well, eventually, um, I, I know my mom, you know, they, they, they say now that, you know, they probably would have gotten divorced if he wouldn't have had his reversion. Um, there was a lot of, you know, um, arguing and just, you know, un, it, things were very unsettled in their relationship. Um, so I know for years she had prayed, you know, like, I need help. Um, and like I said, she grew up in a good family, um, but again, culturally Catholic. Um, so, but that seed was planted there yeah. to at least, you know, when, when you need, unfortunately, when you need something, not all the time, but when you need something, you know, take it to God and, and, and see, you know, what he says and how he answers you. Well, his answer was a full reversion yeah. <laughs> that my dad went through. And um, I know she even said herself, um, she was like, you know, I prayed for years for help. You know, I wanted change. I wanted, um, you know, things to change in our marriage, things to change, um, you know, in his habits and, you know, and how he handled things. Um, but she didn't expect it in that way. So oh. it was even like a reversion for her too, yeah. because, you know, like I said, all of us, there was big change in, in everybody, um, at that point. So, um, yeah. Wow, pray, again, so many topics, you know, that will break out into you. But one is just like, in the beginning, I think it's connected with that restlessness that sometimes yes. I think another battle we wrestle with the faith is not really asking God for what we really want, right? Like, yeah. I really want to be happy. I yes. really want, like, to have a good marriage and a happy family. And it's sometimes it's finally when we finally come to the point of, like, God, I just want to be happy. God's like, okay, now. Roll my sleeves here. <laughs> but I think also to like letting him, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like we have in our mind, yes, God, I want to be happy, and but I want it in this way. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> and God's like, I'm going to do it the best way yeah. because I know best. Um, and so, yeah, being open to that. I think I remember my mom saying that too. Like she wasn't expecting. She was like, you know, he's coming home and, 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 you know, doing all this research online and reading the catechism and, and telling me, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Did you know this? <laughs> <laughs> so I know for her, it was, you yeah. know, an overwhelming, you know, time too, um, of just, like you said, you, you expect, okay, I'm going to, I want a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't realize this is going to entail all, this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these other details, um, and really change, I mean, our entire future. I mean, I don't, I don't know where I would be. Right. If my dad wouldn't have had that reversion, because yeah. I mean, at least at that point, like I said, I had formed my own opinions and beliefs, but those seeds were planted at that point. Right. Um, and I mean, I don't know if I would be where I am right now. Yeah. Well, that's, then at <laughs> the crucial that. moment, then he was able to right, be there to be in answering questions and right. disciple you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Okay. So that. what what happened then? So you're beginning to ask these questions. You're beginning to kind of move back in that direction. Um, so I started to take things more seriously. Um, like I said, learning, um, uh, researching, um, going to confession, realizing what a gift confession is. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of us grow up scared yeah. of the confessional. <laughs> right. And really, it's such a huge gift. It's, you know, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, once we let go of those burdens and those worries and those doubts and those fears um, and really let God's love and mercy flow and his grace come upon us. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And it still gets me, that's, you said I've received a lot of healing, thanks be to God, um, over everything. But and but what thing still makes me emotional is thinking about his love and mercy, thinking about, um, you know, how far away I was. And yet the whole time he was just waiting for me. He was waiting for me to pursue, you know, his his love for me and my love for him. Um, so, um, yeah, just after going back to the confessional, 
um, researching, um, you know, finding out the teachings of the faith mm -hmm. and the lives of the saints, I think were really comforting and really helped me. Um, and at that point, um, I tried to get more serious and I was like, okay, I'm just going to worry about God. Mm. I'm going to pursue him because that's who I should have been pursuing this whole time. Yeah. Um, and I feel like also like letting go, letting him work, you know, like I said, I feel like I had a lot of, I, I was, I was like, okay, you know, I feel like I'm back, you know, I'm, I'm ready for, you know, whatever you have for me, but I still had in the back of my mind, I, I would like it this way. You know, <laughs> like I, I want it to happen this way. And I still had to let go and be like, okay, what do you have planned for me? You know, allow, allow him to work. Um, and so eventually I got on, um, because like I said, I feel like I was really in the pursuit of love and, um, I did pursue Jesus and, um, and that's all I worried about for a while. And, um, eventually though, I, I had always felt the call that I wanted to be a wife and a mother. And so this time I was like, okay, I'm serious about it. I don't want somebody who's not Catholic. You know, I want somebody who's Catholic, who knows their faith, who is serious about their faith. And so, um, like I said, I grew up in Finley, Ohio, and I don't know, I feel like there wasn't a lot of youth at the parish. There wasn't a lot of people my age that I really knew. Um, and like I said, getting back into the faith and, and not growing up with that community, I was kind of searching for, you know, people, people my age and, and whatnot. Um, so I got on Catholic Match and um, I actually had one relationship before I met my husband. Um, but once I met my husband, that's, I feel like it was the rest of the healing that I needed. Mm. The, um, God was showing me his love through my husband. And um, he really showed me what true love, you know, true love was possible. Um, that, you know, the love that he had waiting for me this whole time was way better than I could have ever imagined. And um, which it was hard at first because then I felt bad, you know, about my past life and the things that I had done. Um, and so it did take, you know, a little bit to kind of not fall prey to those thoughts, mm. you know, um, to really believe in, you know, this is the plan that he had for me. You know, my husband was waiting for me and to not go back into that mindset of, you know, wanting to be like, I'm unworthy, you know, to pursue this relationship, but to pursue this kind of love. Um, and so that did take a, a little bit on me. Um, but like I said, once I realized that, you know, this was his plan and, and this is what he had meant for me this whole time. I mean, it was, once I realized it was a gift and it was, it was kind of a surreal time too. I felt like, um, cause like I said, when I did have my quinceanera, my parents were like, you need to be praying for your future husband. And so I did go through a period of, like I said, I didn't fully understand what all that completely right, meant, right. but, um, you know, I would pray for him and, you know, and every now and again, um, and once I did meet him and everything I understood, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is what I was waiting for. Like, this is what I, I could have had if I would have, you know, realized, or, you know, like I said, went in pursuit of that true love through Jesus. Um, and you know, his plans are, like I said, always the best. And yeah. this is what was waiting for me. Yeah. Um, and so through that relationship, like I said, I really realized that love that he had planned for me the whole time. And so um, we, once we met, we were, I think, engaged for six weeks. <laughs> or, or I'm sorry, no, we had, we were together for six weeks and yeah. he had proposed. Uh, so, um, and then we were married uh, six months later. So we were just at that point in our lives, we were like, this is it. Yeah. This is what we've been waiting for. We both were like that. So we were just like, let's get started. You want to start that life right away. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, now I feel like everything, you know, my faith encompasses everything. And it's so crazy to me because before it was like the opposite. It was kind of like, you know, there in the background where now it's like in the forefront. Right. And it's... 
encompasses everything that I do, all the choices that I make, um, you know, how we live our lives on a day-to-day basis. Um, you know, like I said, even the choices of my children, you know, mm-hmm. we homeschool, we do Catholic curriculum. I have a Catholic business. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, I'm so passionate about it <clears throat> that it encompasses every single thing in my life. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, the, uh, finding additional healing in, in that vocation, the vocation of marriage. Mm-hmm. And right. And, and again, as Catholics, we take it very seriously. Marriage is a sacrament. Yes. It's a means of grace. Um, yes. and it's, it, you, know, you talk about the kind of the all-encompassing nature of the faith. When we begin to walk with God again, we realize that, oh, He works through everything yes. for our healing and for our good. Yes. Right? And, yeah. And yeah, like through that hurt, you know, like I said, He, he was still there the whole time. And instead of me blaming Him, you know, I, I could have been, um, you know, like I said, pursuing Him and, and taking a little bit of responsibility myself mm-hmm. of, you know, like, like I said, surrounding, not always making the best choices. Um, and realizing, you know, that he was there the whole time waiting for me and that through the hurt, you know, there is healing. Um, and yeah, just allowing that grace to, to flow yeah. and to pursue him. Ah, wonderful. Alicia, well, let's circle back around to a few things, you know, a few topics that, that might be, you know, of interest, of relevance to other people at, at wherever they are in their particular journey. And one I was thinking of, it, we touched, touched on it briefly earlier, but it's, uh, it's very easy to get this sense uh, in the faith that we're talking about morality, we're talking about sin, morality. That it's just a bunch of like what not to do, mm-hmm. right? You know, yes. so you mentioned chastity earlier. That it's just the, the, the thou shalt nots, right? Yes. But the Catholic vision is not a negative vision; it's a positive vision. Right. Talk a little bit about that. I, I yeah, I feel like that was definitely <clears throat> a missing component. I feel like I didn't understand that, and it was more of like. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. You know, don't do this, don't do that. And, yeah. and 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 when we did start learning stuff, and and so that I questioned, I feel like a lot of it because I was like, why? You know, well, why is this and why is that? And more of like, like you said, it's not just about saying no. It's about God allows it, mm-hmm. and He has a beautiful plan for it, mm-hmm. in in the way that He has it for like you said the way that he plans it for us yeah. it's not just saying no right. it's that he has it designed perfectly mm-hmm. and if we follow that everything you know like you said all the graces and, and beauty that flows from that can yeah. be you know very beautiful and abundant yeah and that's true for marriage and sexuality it, it's yes. it's even true for other things that you mentioned along the way you know uh even things like alcohol or parties or things like yes that. okay you know there's there's a there's a no to those things that are destructive, but it's precisely because there's to be a greater yes to right. what God created us for. We're we're made for heaven. We're mm-hmm. made for the party. We're made <laughs> for the Sabbath. Yeah. But it's it, it, we have all these ways of of trying to to go after happiness, go after peace, go after love in ways that are yes. destructive, right? Yeah, and I feel like I always think of that um, uh, quote by Pope John Paul II, where he says, um, you know, we're really pursuing. I can't remember how he words it, but um, we're in pers- and when we pursue all these other things, yeah. we're really in pursuit of God. Exactly. We're filling our lives with all these other things, and we're really we're searching for Him. Yeah, yeah, and it's unfortunate, you know, like I mean, it's or it's just it's in the in the providence of the thing, in the nature of things that that some of us have to go discover that mm-hmm. we can't find the happiness our own to come yes. back around. But that's that's the thing that we tell to our kids, right? Like this. Please don't learn the mistakes experientially. <laughs> learn from my yes, example. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, only Christ will lead you to true happiness. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. And I feel, I mean, like I said, I have younger brothers. Um, one is 17 and the other one's 12. And so, um, yeah, I definitely, especially like I said, the one who's 17, mm-hmm. you know, my sister and I both try to say, you know, like God has the best plan if you just, yeah. if you just trust him and be patient. I know it's hard. It's not easy. Um, but he really does, if you pursue him, you know, and that's what I definitely felt like once I started pursuing him, everything that I, my heart ever mm-hmm. desired, just all the cards just fell into place. Yeah. You know, my finding my husband, getting married, having, you know, a loving, beautiful marriage, having beautiful children, rediscovering my faith, you know, and the sacraments and, and everything was just, it was just, like I said, this gift that was mm-hmm. waiting for me. Yeah. And I almost didn't see it because of the lies the enemy was trying to convince me of. Yeah. Talk, if you would, for a moment to those, especially young people 
who, you know, whether because of experiences they've had or mistakes that they've made, they are afraid to again reapproach family or the faith. You know, they, you know, that 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 there's a there's a reluctance to to re maybe afraid of what they'll find or, or how they'll be seen. Talk talk to them for a moment. Give them a word of encouragement. Um, I would say, like again, you know, no one is ever too far away. That mm. is, you know, a lie from the enemy. Um, that he wants to convince you um, to not pursue that love and healing um, that awaits you. Um, you know, whatever wounds you have, whatever vices you struggle with, um, nothing is too big, you know, for God. And once you believe that, you know, like I said, Jesus actually died for you as an individual, you will just be set free. From, like I said, those negative thoughts, those things, those chains that are holding you down and trying to hold you back, um, you know, and just like I said, just let all those thoughts, those horrible um, wrong ways of thinking or like lies, just let all that go and pursue him because he's always waiting. And the love and, like I said, healing you'll experience is just beyond anything you could ever imagine. And everything that's waiting for you is better yeah. than you could ever imagine. Right. You mentioned that your, you and your father are sort of twin restless hearts, right? And he was, yeah. because of his experience, he was able to then comfort you. Uh, bring us to the present now. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, given your story and your, your reversion and your healing, now the ways in your, in your marriage, in your motherhood, and in your work that you're now able to turn around and, and share that uh, with others. Um, I, like I said, I feel like it's just almost like a, a flame that, um, that has just been ignited. And so it, it just encompasses everything, you know, um, my dad pretty much calls, I talk to my parents all the time, but my dad definitely call me like through his break and, and we'll, <laughs> we'll be sending each other, um, videos about the faith sermons, mm -hmm. um, articles. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, um, like you said, it's like those, uh, twin hearts, um, that are just, you know, super passionate. Mm -hmm. And so it just, like I said, overflows into everything. And I am grateful, um, you know, that I have that because, you know, you know, family get togethers, mm -hmm. we can sit down and, and we can talk and we can share in the faith. And I know not all families are like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really is a blessing that we can talk about the faith, you know, both the beauty of it and then, you know, the heavy hitting things, you know, that we're going through struggles that we're having or, um, you know, if there's problems in the family that, you know, we're texting each other, you know, pray for so-and-so because, you know, they really need it. And we're like, okay, we'll pray rosary or we'll, um, you know, offer a mass or, you know, whatever. And it's, it's great to have, cause like I said, I know not all families are like that. Mm -hmm. So it really is a gift, um, that, you know, like I said, my dad came back home, that I came back home, and that we can share in that beauty together as a family. Um, you are an artist and a craftswoman. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, talk about, about beauty and about some of the things that you, that you make. Um, I think that is definitely, I'm really passionate about that. Um, I make uh, wall rosaries. Um, and a lot of them are made out of uh, handmade felt flowers. Mm. Um, Our Lady has really been there for me. Like I said, I, culturally, it was I would see Our Lady of Guadalupe everywhere. Um, and I feel like she definitely was watching out for me. Um, and like I said, seeing it culturally, I really didn't put two and two together until mm. it was many years later. It was actually um, when I um, was, uh, realized I was pregnant with my daughter. Mm. And um, I was kind of panicking because at the time I had some health problems mm. and um, financially we were like struggling and uh, we hadn't, we were renting a house, you know, we hadn't bought a house yet. And like I said, this was my third pregnancy and I was just, you know, worried about all these different things. And I called my sister, I didn't even call my husband first. <laughs> I called my sister and um, she was like, do you realize what today's feast day is. And I was like, no. And she was like, it's Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I was mm. like, oh my gosh. It, it, like literally the day I find out I'm, I, you know, I'm pregnant. And so um, at that point, I really realized that she was my mother. And I feel like, you know, she was really taking me under her mantle. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I really didn't, you know, put that together for several years. But once I did, I was, you know, became very passionate about the rosary. And like I said, that carries over into 
my business yeah. and a lot of the things that I do, I, like I make rosaries for the home, I make rosaries for children, I make rosary, it just really trying to reiterate the, the beauty of the rosary and how yeah. she is there waiting for us to embrace her as our mother. The rosary is such a wonderful uh, devotion. Again, if there's, there are those listening that, that haven't dug into it, I encourage them to do so. So even if they're coming from non-Catholic backgrounds, uh, recognizing how scriptural it is and how, yes. I think one of the things that is important to me is it's a, it's a devotion that brings together things that sometimes remain disparate in our Christian faith, which mm -hmm. sort of a, our spirit over here, our body, right? No, we're, we're, we're whole human beings. And so yes. we, we come into this devotional meditation on the incarnation, mm -hmm. the actual physical life yes. of our Lord through the eyes yes. of, of Our Lady. We have the tactile mm -hmm. of, of, of the beads as as we're spending this time with God. Yes. It, it, it's a whole really integrated whole, prayer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I feel like my favorite, um, like you said, kind of the, the talking about scripture and how mm -hmm. people don't realize how biblically based yeah. it is. My favorite quote from uh, Father Calloway, um, he says, the Bible is, uh, or the rosary is the Bible on a set of beads. Uh -huh. When you pray, you're praying the word of God. Yeah. And that is probably like one of my favorite quotes. It really just encompasses everything. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a beautiful devotion. My husband and I make sure we pray our rosaries and pray with our children. And so, like I said, I think that's just what I'm really passionate about and is, you know, making those items, not just for the home, but for families yeah. to use to encourage that family rosary. and. Yeah. And encourage you know children to learn about you know the rosary and how important it is. We have just a few minutes left, and okay. so let's let's uh, take a few minutes and just talk. You know, if we go back to the beginning of your story, um, you had a, a, a pretty good upbringing, childhood, a lot mm -hmm. of Catholicism around you. Mm -hmm. Can we give some advice and encouragement to parents who are raising their kids in the faith and they they want to give them the best start possible? What <laughs> what are some things that they can do to share the faith with their kids and the practice of the faith with their kids? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, the rosary, Yeah, big one. <laughs> um, even if it's just learning the Hail Mary, it's just starting out learning a Hail Mary, praying, um, together as a family. I think that's really important too. Um, and, and teaching, you know, like I said, our children that, um, you know, it's not just on Sundays, you know, our faith is a, is an everyday, um, everyday part of our lives. You know, our pursuit and love for Jesus is an everyday thing. It's not just you know, going to mass or going to Catholic school or, um, you, you know, it's more than that. And we have to show them by our own example, you know, how, um, you know, are we, you know, like I said, teaching them prayers? Are we praying in front of them? Do they see us, you know, praying out? Do they see us making um, church and, you know, teach the teachings of the faith? Do they see us making that a priority or is it just kind of on the back burner? Yeah. Um, I know, like I said, just growing up and, and not going to mass and stuff like that. So that's kind of stuff I grew up seeing. So, you know, when I became older, I really didn't think it was a big deal and didn't understand the commandments and, and, you know, our obligation as Catholics. Um, so yeah, I think just like I said, being that example, making sure we're teaching them the faith, you know, from the beginning, um, of course, age appropriate, <laughs> we're not going to go into big theological, right, right. you know, things at a very young age, but just, yeah. you know, like I said, planting those seeds, making sure it's a part of everyday life. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. There's a priest on recently who, who made the, the, the point and it comes in, into my mind during your testimony, which is that we, we have to make sure our kids know the connection between Catholicism and their ultimate happiness. Yeah. Right? And we talked about this earlier, yes. right? that if, if, it, if they don't see, if they don't through their, Christ, their Christian education, see the connection between yes. why do we do this is because we're, we're called to this mm -hmm. and our only ultimate happiness is in Christ. And yes. that's why we're Catholic. Yes. They mm -hmm. don't see that. And so that's certainly we tell them that, but then they also have to see it in us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's yeah. clear that you have a joy in your faith that I'm sure that is impactful to your kids. So. Yes, I try. I yeah. try really hard. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Alicia, for sharing your story and for your yes. work and for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Journey Home Program. I, I want to you know, remind you, you know, that wherever you are on your particular spiritual journey, as Alicia said, you, you're never too far from Christ. He loves you. He wants to welcome you home. I've been thinking recently about the fact that sometimes we're, we're tempted to think that when we sin, maybe God will stop forgiving us. I've sinned too many times or so, too big. He'll never stop forgiving the repentant. He loves you. The danger of sin is that you might get tired of saying, I'm sorry. Don't get tired of saying you're sorry. Run back to the Father. He loves you. He wants to welcome you home. And 
And if you're on that journey, somewhere along that journey, uh, please check out chnetwork.org. We'd love to be praying for you and answering any questions you have and trying to encourage you and walking with you as that journey continues. So check that out at chnetwork.org. There's also uh, many additional stories there like Alicia's as well to be an inspiration to you. So check that out. And again, we'll be back next week uh, here on EWTN on the Journey Home program to share another story with you. God bless you. I'll see you then.